In this module, I'll be discussing how air pollution control devices are designed. First, we'll discuss the removal of gas constituents. So these would be toxic gases that are present in a gas phase. There are three mechanisms that can be utilized to remove gas constituents. The first is absorption, the second is adsorption, and the third is combustion. We'll discuss absorption with the use of spray chambers and scrubbers, and then towers or packed columns. Absorption is the transfer of a gas to the bulk liquid phase. Adsorption is the transfer of a gas to a solid surface. And we'll discuss adsorption for packed adsorbent towers as well. The third mechanism is combustion. This is commonly used to combust methane or carbon monoxide or hydrocarbons. We'll discuss afterburners, which you've seen at wastewater treatment plants and we've discussed for landfills, or catalytic converters, which are used on automobiles. The first mechanism, absorption, is defined as mass transfer from the gas phase to a liquid phase. The rate of transfer is controlled by the concentration gradient, diffusion to the interface, transfer across the interface, and diffusion away from the interface. This is sometimes called boundary conditions, or you may hear it referred to as a two-film theory. In principle, the concentration of gas in solution, which is C equilibrium, this is the liquid concentration, is controlled by the partial pressure in the gas phase, or PG. If you look at this, the higher concentration, the partial pressure, the higher concentration in the liquid phase. Because of this principle, as we look at the two technologies where this is applied, we'll utilize countercurrent flow. Countercurrent flow is a way to create the condition where the most concentrated gas stream interacts with the most concentrated liquid stream. This way you don't get release of absorbed liquid from the liquid phase back to the gas phase. The two technologies that are mostly utilized are spray chambers, which may be titled scrubbers, which is shown here, and also towers or columns. Spray chambers are relatively inefficient, but they're extremely simple. The polluted stream enters in the bottom. That gas will break will rise here, and as it does so, a fluid is sprayed into the chamber, and you'll have liquid that comes downward. In this, in this case, the most concentrated gas here is at the bottom of the chamber, and as the liquid comes down, it will absorb that gas, and the most concentrated liquid will happen at the bottom as well. In this way, there's no equilibrium pressure for the liquid to release back into the gas phase. This is the principle of countercurrent flow. Now you'll see here that there is a sludge line or a liquid line that leaves this chamber. Some small particulates may also be removed in the spray chamber, but the main purpose is to remove gas constituents. The packed tower is a very similar concept. Gas enters in the bottom. It's packed with material, but this packed material is not adsorbent. So the purpose here is not to perform absorption. The purpose is that as this gas comes in, it is forced into that packed bed and liquid is coming down through that packed bed as well. And what this does is it increases surface area contact between the two fluid phases. And this creates a more efficient absorption. In the second mechanism, adsorption is utilized. Adsorption utilizes mass transfer from the gas phase to a solid phase. The surface phenomena adsorbs the gas. This performs, it performs this by creating chemical bonds Adsorption towers can be very efficient for hydrocarbons, H2S, and SO2 capture. Before, it's very important that water is first removed from the gas stream. These also cannot operate at high temperatures of 150 to 500 degrees Celsius because doing so would inactivate the absorption or release the absorbed compounds back into a gas stream. 
It literally burns them off. Common adsorbents are activated carbon, silica gel, and activated alumina. The concept of breakthrough is important for adsorption towers. Take a tower here that is packed with some adsorbent media. As the gas stream enters, here C0, the, the gas constituent is transferred from the gas phase to the solid phase, and so it's being shown as sorbing to the material becoming darker. At some point, all of the active sites become full, and when this occurs, the concentration that leaves the tower dramatically and suddenly increases. So if you look here at an, at an x-axis of volume of effluent and a y-axis of concentration of gas in the effluent, which would be here, C effluent, you'll see that initially the concentration of the effluent is very low, very low, and as that absorption breakthrough occurs, the concentration quickly increases to equal C naught what entered. When breakthrough is observed, adsorption media must be regenerated or replaced. In practice, we try not to ever get to the point of breakthrough. And so this break point would be a warning for an operator to go ahead and switch to a redundant column and then regenerate the media. The third mechanism for removal of gas constituents is combustion. In combustion, the contaminant gas is oxidized to an inert gas. This is typically performed for methane, which we've seen quite, quite a lot of in this course, and hydrocarbons. We've seen direct flame combustion, or afterburners, where the gas is simply flared. This is common for autogenous fuels that are self-supported after ignition, such as methane. And this is what is used at the wastewater treatment plant and at landfill sites. For methane release. None of the byproducts can be more toxic than the original pollutant gas, or afterburner would not be an appropriate solution. The other option is a catalytic combustion unit, or catalytic converter. This is for gases that are not self-supporting after ignition. In this, you have your contaminated gas, here which is laden down by volatile organic compounds or hydrocarbons, and you also have a gas burner here that is adding heating value to make the flare go. 